down with a knapsack on my shoulder and a pocket full of stories that I just had to tell. You know I've knocked around a bit and I've had my share of small town glories. It's time to hit the city and that crazy carousel. Good afternoon everybody. This is rather an interesting way to start a group lesson, but what we had in mind for the very next week, which was week six, was we were going to clean our instruments. So I thought I'd just go through with everybody to show how I'm going to clean Violet the violin because she's very grubby. Just from all working every day, Look, you can see all of this rosin here and rosin under here that sits there and dust. There's even tiny little, I think there's a little spider that lives in just inside my violin because I see little cobwebs in there as well. So I'm going to give her a beautiful clean this afternoon and I'm going to show you all the things that I need to clean her and clean out my violin case sometimes the violin cases are really good for your little pets you might have um, a very friendly cat that comes in and has a little snuggle in your violin case and leaves lots of hairs okay so oh it just gets dirty after a while just like everything like the car like your bedroom like the kitchen it just gets dirty and it needs to have a good clean First of all, I'm going to employ my vacuum cleaner and I'm going to start with the case, okay? Because that will be nice. There's all sorts of bits around the edge that need, oh, looks like I've been eating over it, who knows? But when you put the vacuum cleaner into your case, you have to put it down. If you put it on its very lowest suction, so it doesn't take the insides of your case out, only the dirt. So. This one's really good to get round the edges. And just this next size up is really good as well, just to go over it. Get all the dust out. My poor old case looks like it's losing the upholstery in the top of the, the roof of the car. It's about ready for a new case. Now that I've finished cleaning up my case, I've collected different rags, a bowl of warm water, my boiled jug, I've got some eucalyptus oil, some methylated spirits, and a couple of different cleaning products. There. This Mr. Sheen is extremely good for shiny instruments with new varnish and the rose cream and the Oceda are better for older instruments that don't have so much thick shiny varnish on them where you can be caring for the wood. Okay, soft cloth number one. It just gets the dust off. So nothing wet, just the dust. It's going to get the rosin that's hanging around on my fingerboard and the rosin underneath, underneath the fingerboard. And I'll sit down and do that really well. Next, I'm going to wet my chucks. Just with the warm water and squeeze it out so it's nearly dry. So you get all the drips out and it's not really wet. And now 
it's nice and warm and I'm just going to go over my violin just with the damp cloth just to take the next layer of dirt off okay so because we handle our violins all the time it is quite often violins and cellos and any instrument really woodwind instruments have a really important way of cleaning their instruments after they've played each time and i like to oh listen to that squeak that's the extra rosin on my strings so i'll sit down and i'll make sure that this damp cloth goes underneath in all the little spot all little crevices a good look at your instrument now and turn it over make sure you're working over the carpet because it's very easy to drop your instrument when you're doing unusual things with it okay and it's not in rest position check it out and see if there are any little sticky bits often around all around here around the f holes where the rosin comes down and lands on your violin sometimes it gets quite sticky there and if you've got some sticky rosin that's not lifting up with that damp cloth it's time to go the big guns which is the very hot water so i've boiled this jug i'm going to put some hot water in the jug like this but this is something that you might get mum and dad to help you with Add a little tiny bit of eucalyptus oil, just a drip on the top. Now, the reason why I'm using the water and I'm not putting it on directly is because eucalyptus oil is really, really, really good at its job, which is to lift sticky things off. And I'm just going to use the same rag because I'm not cleaning another violin. And I'll also, so you can imagine that once it's been in with all that water, it's distributed well on the rag and it's not concentrated like it would be if I just dripped it on. So it smells absolutely beautiful. And it should be enough of a cleaner just to wipe over those sticky bits and lift them off. See if that's working. I've got some sticky bits there too. My great grandma, who owned Violet the violin, let her rosin stay for a long time. See how it, it has actually stuck to the violin and it's there forever and it makes that rather nice dark patch. But it takes a long time to look rather nice. Generally, it just looks dirty. There we go. So I'm quite pleased with that now. I'm going to sit down and I'll just go up underneath the fingerboard like this on either side. I won't do it standing up because it's too dangerous. And just make sure there's nothing sticky underneath there. Good. Did you remember to wipe over the scroll and the peg box? I've even got a little one of these and I can give it a little clean in there because it gets quite dirty in the peg box. Just, you can have a little bit of the dampness on that. That's it, little cotton bud. And just wipe it in there, give it a clean. Go around all the little ridges on your scroll. And when you think you've done everything and you've been right over your violin with the lovely cleaning cloth, it's time to give it a dry. So I'm going back to my first cloth because it's the dry one. And I give my violin a little dry, dry, dry all over. If you do put the concentrated um, eucalyptus oil directly on your violin, 
sometimes it it's so good at what it does that it actually lifts the varnish off so that's why you have to put it in the boiling or hot hot water so that it distributes and you're only using a very small amount of it that's it oh i think she looks beautiful already she's got no more of that dirt nothing oh she looks great oh i'm just going to use my cotton bud even though i love my little spiders that live in there and i'm going to clean around the f holes very gently see how thin the timber is on your instrument let's see it around the F hole beautiful and when she's all dry she's ready for a polish you can see that it's much cleaner but it does look like it's it's matte or not shiny not super shiny finish so we'll see what happens when we put the polish on. I think today I'm going to select that special rose polish because it's a cream and it's got linseed oil in it. And, oh, it's just got things that nourish timber and make timber very healthy again. So I'm going to rub that in with a different cloth. Here it is, looks like this. And I got it from the, um, the timber shop at the butter factory. Mm, and that's what it looks like. And it needs a very small amount of that cream on my cloth. And then I just rub it all over and I leave it on there for about 10 minutes so that it can sit and set on there. This is a lovely job to do together. This is where we're going to have fun doing this. So here I'm putting this cream on my violin, making sure that I don't rub it on the strings. We're keeping the methylated spirits for the strings and that's the last job that we're going to do. So I'm going to polish up the neck, and polish up the scroll. This is a lovely job. It really makes you feel good when you're looking after your instrument because your instrument plays such beautiful music for you. It comes from your heart, through your fingers and your brain. So I'll just keep working on this and I'll show you when I'm finished. So don't forget the ribs, these bits that hold the violin together, the back and the front, they're called the ribs. This lovely shape here. And it's really fun to polish the back because there's so much timber. If you're ever looking for a violin that's going to be your violin when you grow into a full size violin, it's really fun if you can find an old, old violin that somebody's loved for many years, probably even a couple of hundred years, because the timber was so beautiful back there, they chose really excellent trees and the craftsmen really um, carved their instruments to use very thin, thin timber and it meant that the sound was very gorgeous that comes from your violin or your cello so I love and if you're looking for one try and look for one that has a f no seam down the back if it's a full piece of timber it was a very special violin so it's called a, a single piece back oh, she's looking beautiful that matte finish is going away and she's starting to look shiny. Okay. I have this little violin at home from school. She's waiting to get some new strings and 
uh, be renovated because I love looking after them at home. But you can see it's much more highly varnished. It's got a, a high varnish on it and a high shine. So I'm going to use, to clean that one, I'm going to use my Mr. Sheen. And, but I don't spray it directly. I wouldn't spray Mr. Sheen onto my violin because it would do terrible things to the strings. So the way to do it is you spray the Mr. Sheen onto your rag like this, that's it. And then you can really know where you're going to polish the violin. There we go. So that means that you're not spraying it over anything that might melt under Mr. Sheen. But Mr. Sheen really makes high varnished violins look very special. Look how shiny that one's coming up already, just with one little rub. It's much quicker than using the furniture polish. Okay, and it smells really fresh and clean too. After you've put the polish absolutely everywhere, pay a little bit of extra attention to all the edges because they're very good at being quite beaten up and beaten about and they can really do with some extra love. While I let this polish really sink into my violin, I'm going to clean my bow. So I'm just going to clean the stick today. I would like to shampoo it sometime because it's got lots of greasy bits where my thumb rests against the hairs there. But I'm, today I'm just going to work on the stick because I'm working on the timber of my violin today and the bow. So I'll wind it up quite tight so that I can try to avoid touching the hairs. And then I'll go through exactly the same process as before. So we start with a dusting going up and down. You can feel the rosin on the inside of your bow that's stuck there. And then I'll go over with my little damp cloth there we go, trying to avoid touching the hairs at all. So I'm really, really, you can see, I'm really trying to avoid touching the hairs because I don't want to wet them and I don't want to add anything to them. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of this chucks through like this and take it, zip it up along there like that. There we go. So I'm really trying to take that sticky, greasy bit of rosin I can feel that's stuck to the timber of the bow. And I'm removing it with my little bit of mm, special rag that's got the eucalyptus oil in it. There we go. Very important I don't get eucalyptus oil on my hairs. So this is probably a really good job for mum or dad I hope they're watching. This is the fun bit. I'm going to buff it now. I'm using the toweling that's got lots of little loops. And I'm just going to polish it quite gently because I know that my instrument is quite fragile. So even though it looks like I'm buffing and polishing, I'm doing it in a very gentle way. Not pressing too hard on the timber. I think she's looking shiny. There we go, there's her single piece back. This is a lovely job to do while you're sitting and watching a little bit of telly or listening to 
whichever book that you're studying at the moment. Right. I think it would be very satisfying if it was a cello because it would be so much timber to polish and make look beautiful. I can't wait for when we all get back together again and I'll see all of these gorgeous shiny violins and they'll probably smell really good too. This one does, oh, it smells beautiful. How do you think Violet looks? Hmm? That matte look is disappearing and she's getting her shine back. That's beautiful. My last job is going to involve methylated spirits. So you definitely need a helper because it has a childproof opener. And you just need one little dab on your cloth like this. I'm sure someone in your ha house could help you with this. Grandparents are very good at cleaning things. That was something they really perfected the art of. And the methylated spirits is just for the strings. So all the strings from the greasy fingers that we have and the rosin that ends up down here, get quite dirty and they can do with a good clean. So here, I'm just gonna rub it over lightly. Usually squeaks more than this. That's it, that's it. I'm not pushing hard, just rubbing up and down. And usually you get big black lines on your cloth. I think I might have cleaned them too well when I was at my water stage. Remember when you heard them squeaking right at the beginning? Now, I feel like my violin has had a little bit of a renovation. It's had lots of love, smells good, and I can't wait to play it. I hope you have fun cleaning your instrument this week. I just had to tell You know I've knocked around a bit And I've had my share All kinds of Good afternoon, everybody. This afternoon, we're going to continue 